My good friend David Davis sent me a message a while back asking if I wanted to shoot an event with him for an episode of Hey Don't Shoot. I agreed without really paying much attention to exactly what I was signing up for. And with the date of the event rapidly approaching, I figured I ought to find out just exactly what type of event we would be shooting. As it so happened, the event was the Neon Paint Party, which was held at the Wet n Wild Water Park in Anthony, Texas. This set off alarm bells because the event would clearly be featuring paint and water, neither of which are good for cameras or lenses. With that in mind, I decided to bring my Sony Action Cams, the AS50 and X3000, because each has a waterproof housing but at least the bodies would survive unscathed. Not wanting to limit myself to just those two wide angle action cams, I also brought along my versatile Sony RX100 Mark IV, which is small, well made and battle tested. I figured it would be able to withstand the rigors of a wet paint live concert event. Meanwhile, young David brought along his Canon 5D Mark III with three or four different lenses, a pretty heavy and relatively pricey kit to bring to an event featuring water and paint. Young David is braver than I am. I left my expensive gear back at the house. Will our gear stand up to the test? Let's find out. Shooting a concert or other similar live event poses some tremendous and unique challenges. There are known factors such as that you know you'll be dealing with crowds in a rowdy environment and there are unknown factors to deal with such as the potential for spilled drinks and getting bumped into. Add to that the water and paint that's going to be splashed and blasted all over the crowd and you've got the makings for either a brilliant evening of photography or a disaster for your equipment. I was a little bit surprised that David didn't bring any sort of cover or protection for his gear. After all, this event was being held at a water park. The crowd started lining up early. The mood was festive and energetic. We walked around getting some shots of the setup and of the neon paints which were handed out to the attendees. But these small cups of paint were just the tip of the iceberg. David also brought along his DJI Osmo to get some nice smooth Steadicam shots captured to his iPhone. This setup is really a great bargain for the price. It's lightweight and easy to use and gives your videos a real professional feel to them. As night began to fall, the show started with the setting sun making for a beautiful backdrop for the event. The LED light show added to the electric and vibrant ambiance, and the crowd really fed off both the music, lights, and the paint. As you can see, there was a ton of paint being thrown around. Would you want to shoot with your gear in this type of environment without any sort of cover or protection? One of the advantages of having an all-access press pass to an event like this is that you have access to the stage area which equates to great shots of the performances and of the audience. David and I were able to get our shots of the crowd getting pelted with paint without putting ourselves and our gear in the line of fire all too much. So be sure to request a press pass for any events you'd like to shoot. The worst they can say is no. David and I were even able to get on stage as well as getting a bird's eye view of the pit. This is where all the action was happening and where most of the paint was getting splashed onto the crowd. It was fun to watch David work. He is extremely passionate about photography and isn't afraid to get dirty. But I still couldn't believe he didn't have a cover for his gear. We made our way around to the back of the crowd to get some shots from the rear view of the venue. It wasn't long before paint started hitting us and our cameras. It wasn't too bad, some light splashes here and there, but it was enough to get our attention. David had no choice but to use anything he could find to wipe the paint off his gear. In this case, a staff t-shirt we found backstage. It wasn't optimal, but it was better than nothing. A high energy concert event such as this is a cacophony of magical, psychedelic sights and sounds. So always keep your cameras rolling as much as possible for video and be ready to shoot photos. 
Everything happens fast and non-stop, so you have to be ready with your finger on the trigger or you might miss a cool shot. You can usually count on minimal ambient lighting for an event such as this, so you might want to consider bringing a portable light source. David brought along an affordable yet efficient LED light that mounts on the top of his camera, but even an iPhone flashlight might do the trick. The challenge is to get enough light onto your subject so that your viewers can see what you're shooting, but not drown out the beautiful colors of the ambient light and lose the vibe of the event. We stayed at the event from about 6 p.m. all the way until we got our shots of the headline act, which was a DJ named Dioro. We got all the shots we wanted, then made our way to the parking lot in enough time to beat the crowd. We headed to the nearest IHOP to lick our wounds and fill up our bellies, as we did not stop to eat anything all night. We made a quick assessment of David's gear and I'm happy to say that although it did get splashed with a little paint, all of his gear survived intact what was a challenging photo shoot. Thanks for watching another great episode of Hey Don't Shoot. A big thank you to David Davis and his girlfriend Jade for inviting me to shoot the event with him. We had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoy the photos. Be sure to like this video, leave a comment, let us know how you might shoot a crowded event that features as much water and paint as this one did. And as always, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.